So sixth topic of this course will focus on the modeling of joint production of uh, multiple outputs, uh, including bad outputs such as uh, greenhouse gas emissions or other, other pollution. And uh, this has proved to be a rather vexing uh, topic and uh, I will start by considering the uh, mainstream economic approaches to, to modeling joint production and I believe that this is particularly an area where the uh, tools and techniques of this course can be very helpful. So firstly, let's look into the importance of uh, multi-product firms. So here I have uh, reproduced you a table from a, a study by Bernard Redding and Scott in uh, American Economic Review about 10 years ago. So they look at uh, U.S. manufacturing census data and uh, examine the prevalence of um, uh, multi-product firms and, and industries. Uh, and uh, they, in their data, they find that um, almost 60% of firms are, are single product firms, uh, uh, but they cover only 9% of output. So often the single product firms tend to be rather small. 41% uh, of, the, of the firms in their sample are multi-product firms uh, and they cover 91% of the total output. And among those uh, 41%, 29% uh, of firms are multi-industry and 13% are multiple sector firms. And uh, the average number of uh, uh, mean, mean products on this uh, the last column indicates that the average number of uh, products uh, for multi-product firms is four. So uh, this illustrates that at least in U.S. manufacturing, uh, multi-product firms are very common and cover cover large amount of uh, of uh, production. And particularly, it indicates that uh, that uh, big firms tend to be operating with in multiple industries and uh, and producing multiple outputs. So that as a motivation of the of the um, uh, importance of uh, modeling multiple outputs. Um, traditionally, of course, uh, in economics, the, the outputs is uh, um, production is typically uh, modeled using a production function, which implicitly assumes a single output setting. And this is, of course, also the setting that we have uh, started with our our taxonomy of models, for example. So this is also the classical SFA approach to, to modeling. So in this uh, theme, we will then extend it to the multiple outputs. But uh, that's not as straightforward as it might, uh, might appear. So there are, of course, several attempts to extend the single output production function to the, to the multiple output settings. And there are also some uh, really bad uh, or, or naive ideas also in the literature. So one attempt is, is uh, uh, was introduced by Foster, Haltivang and Syverson, also in American Economic Review. So in their approach, uh, when they encounter multi-product firms uh, or multi-product plants, so that was using plant-level data even, uh, so uh, they seem to think of these uh, processes as, as uh, or plants as running multiple uh, parallel processes. So I have tried to uh, illustrate the situation in the in the diagram below, so this flow chart is is uh, is um, something that I, I I developed to illustrate it. So think about the situation with the three outputs, and um, as as in this flow chart, I have illustrated that uh, that we think of uh, three parallel processes that run in the plant, and uh, I have taken this quotation of their article where they say that. Uh, uh, in, they seem to think that this uh, multi-output uh, setting is mainly the problem that uh, that uh, in data set these inputs of these uh, three parallel processes would be reported uh, uh, together. So these inputs are not really separated by these uh, different processes. So therefore, they they make this kind of rather arbitrary assumption that they then uh, apportion these uh, inputs to these different outputs. Uh, based on this uh, uh, revenue shares or shares of plant sales. So uh, first of all, this, uh, this idea that, uh, that these inputs would be used based on the revenue shares, 
that's that's uh, completely arbitrary. I, I, it's easy to show that, for example, um, profit maximizing doesn't necessarily require that uh, that uh, that inputs would be used according to the to the revenue shares. And perhaps even bigger problem might be that uh, that uh, this kind of idea that uh, there is some um, parallel processes, so we can just divide these inputs among these uh, multiple outputs that completely ignores the possible synergies of joint production. So another paper where the synergies are ignored is, is uh, by Delocker et al. that appeared in uh, Econometrica a few years ago. So in that uh, their approach, they do not need this kind of a portion based on revenue shares. However, that also still assumes away synergies. So their idea is, is illustrated in this diagram that I have drawn here in this slide. So think about the situation with the two output settings where and, in, and uh, they, they look at data of, uh, from India. And uh, in their data set, uh, they can observe uh, all, both uh, single output firms that specialize in one output or the other, and then also multi-product firms. So their idea is to use this data of single output firms, and this is indicated by these blue dots in this, uh, in this diagram. So they estimate the production function for output number one using the specialized firms specializing in this uh, output number one. So they get the production function for output number one using specialized firms. And they do the same for output number two. So that's indicated by these blue dots on the, on the vertical axis now. So they estimate two separate production functions based on the, on the specialized firm specializing in output number one in the first production function and specializing in output number two for the second production function. And subsequently for the multi-output firms, then they interpolate these uh, single, single output production functions. So this is indicated by the straight lines connecting these blue dots. So the idea is that uh, with the same same input resources you could either obtain this extreme point on this output number one or output number two and then you can just interpolate so this of course assumes away the possibility of synergy so so this still remain maintains this idea that you can uh, multi-product firms are similarly uh, operating this kind of parallel processes and there is not any interaction between these between these processes so, so you can just run this output or produce output number one in isolation of output number two. But uh, importantly, ignoring the synergies, in my view, that uh, kind of tends to assume away all this benefit of the, uh, I mean, why would you produce jointly if there is not really any benefit of that? So examples of synergies uh, could be, for example, seen uh, how the universities are organized. So, so uh, as a professor, I'm engaged in uh, teaching activities like uh, like this online course, but also I do I do research, and uh, there is idea that there are some benefits of doing this jointly. So when I when I do research, I'm uh, engaged in developing these kind of ideas that I'm teaching in this course, and while while teaching this in this course, I can also then gain better understanding to develop this. Um, better research ideas. So therefore, there might be some, some synergies and interaction between these processes. And in many cases, I believe that uh, if uh, companies are engaged in, in uh, joint production of multiple outputs, it's particularly because there is some benefit of doing that. So let me illustrate this idea by, by this uh, diagram taken from an article by Pope and Johnson in uh, Journal of Productivity Analysis. So this Johnson is same Andrew Johnson that uh, that uh, we developed this uh, techniques for the modeling Z variables. So in the left diagram that intro indicates this idea of synergies. So these two output variables here are indicated as uh, chaff and grain, and uh, what Pope and Johnson calls there there, there is positive returns to scope in this case. So, so if you specialize in grain or if you specialize in chaff, then, then, uh, then uh, there is uh, uh, less, I mean, there is, there is uh, more potential output if you produce them jointly. 
Uh, in the extreme case, you might have like like complete uh, complementarity that would be indicated by this uh, broken line. But uh, but uh, typically, if there is positive returns to scope or synergies, then this output uh, uh, output frontier would be curved away from the origin. So then this concept of negative returns to scope is uh, indicated in this uh, right diagram where these axes are hats and mittens. So the idea is there that if you, if you specialize in, in production of hats or you specialize in the production of mittens, then, then there are economies of specialization. You can produce more hats or more mittens rather than if you try to produce both of them jointly. So in this case, then this uh, uh, output frontier for joint production is bent towards the origin. So it's below this kind of uh, broken straight line. So this broken straight line on the right diagram indicates this kind of situation that there is uh, no synergies whatsoever. And if there are some negative returns to scope, then there is, uh, then this uh, curve is bent towards the origin. So uh, of course, when the firms can freely choose if they, uh, if they operate uh, or if they produce multiple outputs jointly, or if they specialize in one or one production, one output only, then obviously why, why would the firm choose to produce jointly if, if there's no benefit of doing that? So we would expect that, uh, that uh, there are some synergies present if, uh, if a firm chooses to produce uh, outputs jointly. Sometimes, of course, there can be some kind of um, constraints that if you think about, uh, for example, healthcare and some local, um, local healthcare center operating in some small, um, small town or village, you might need to produce a wide range of, uh, of healthcare services rather, and you cannot specialize. Whereas then if you operate in a more densely, op densely populated uh, area, you have a lot of customers, then hospitals could specialize in more uh, more specialized operations and, and only produce a limited set of uh, outputs. So this possibility to specialize, of course, might depend on the operating environment and the, and the, and the institutional setting. So sometimes uh, uh, the firms cannot specialize as much as they potentially would like to. But if there's a free chance to, a free opportunity to specialize or benefit from synergies, then and we would expect that uh, that uh, firms would utilize uh, synergies and joint production only when it is beneficial for them to do so. So question that then arises, how can we model this kind of synergies? So I taken here this, um, this uh, from the textbook by Coelho et al, uh, the definition of the so-called output set P of X so this P of X is very similar to the production possibility set T that we considered uh, earlier in theme two. Now we can, we can also characterize this kind of uh, output sets like, uh, like uh, I've previously illustrated in this Pope and Johnson's uh, pictures. So in general, if you have some kind of uh, vector of input resources X, so then this P of X uh, indicates the set of possible uh, output combinations that can be produced with these inputs. So it's important to understand that when the production function, there is this kind of uh, uh, mapping, there's a unique mapping from your input resources to a single output. And this is possible in the case of a single output. But as soon as we introduce second output, if we have more than one output, then the question arises, okay, how should we then uh, divide these resources between the outputs. So there is no unique mapping anymore from the input resources to this uh, output space. We need to make some kind of choice that how this uh, output, how these resources are allocated between these two outputs. And there can be synergies like I in, in indicated before. So there are a couple of important um, axioms worth noting in this uh, list of axioms from Coelho et al. So these are similar kind of uh, axioms like free disposability. Here it's indicated as strong disposability, but, uh, but never mind. Uh, perhaps it's important to look at the last two ones. So P of X should be bounded. That's in some sense very, very critical that, uh, that uh, you cannot produce uh, infinite amount of output with the limited uh, finite resources. So obviously uh, outputs that should be bounded. 
And if you think about this um, synergies, then this P of X is uh, assumed to be convex. So like in this uh, illustration of Pope and Johnson, uh, where we had this uh, positive returns to scale, scope, uh, uh, in that case, then P of X was also, also convex. So if we have a bounded and convex output set, then the situation would look something like this. So in this Coelis uh, textbook, uh, uh, where, this, the, where this figure is taken from directly, uh, they denote outputs by Q, whereas I have used uh, symbol Y for the outputs. That's worth to note. So here this Q1 and Q2 indicate outputs. In my notation, it would be YI and Y1 and Y2. And therefore, then for given set of resources, then the output set uh, is indicated by this, uh, this uh, area below this uh, curved uh, boundary, which is indicated as PPC. So with the given resources, there are certain, certain combinations of output are possible and there are certain efficient combinations. And then uh, below this boundary towards the origin, then we can have also inefficient uh, uh, output combinations. So it's of course also not self-evident that these output combinations are efficient. So that's in, according to the production theory, how we usually think about the multiple outputs. So with the given input resources, there is uh, infinitely many output combinations that are possible, and those can be characterized by the output set P of X. So now we need some kind of mapping from the input vector to a set of possible output vectors rather than to a single, single scalar valued output. To characterize then this kind of, uh, kind of set, then it is convenient to have also some kind of uh, uh, functional representations of the technology. And this will form the next topic we will consider then distance functions as uh, representations of the technology. And uh, we will utilize mainly the uh, DEA approach to, to modeling these distance functions. Or we start with that approach because that's really uh, immediately um, applicable to the multiple output setting.